what are you providing to a lot of you, a lot of beautiful Italian wine, and I think a lot of it. So, how do you feel if you know that a person who is sticking to you has a major portion of his right side being removed? How do you feel if you know that the person who is sticking to you has lost 80% of his hearing and has still using devices for the last 20 years, fighting hard for him to listen, but still continuing with his life? And how do you see? If you know that the person who is speaking to you has almost six screws grilled into his spine, he has to pick a new style, but still able to carry on his own activities. That's the power of thought, and that's the power of belief and the angle of the So, this is my story, my story of fifth of transformation and of beliefs. Once upon a time, I also started my turn by the age in China. The child who was lying, was still, who was living inside, would not have this nature. But suddenly, one day, it changed my life. I was trained and do program to chase success, right? Or to chase the success, take the hours, trying to create hours, but they all have. I achieved it. It was like a great journey. I was really my success of my life. But one day changed my life forever. And that was the start of my first story. My first story that taught me the power of thoughts and the power of my own belief. That was 20th March 2003. I came back home almost after operating for one and a half days. Very really tired and fatigued. 5.30 p.m. in the evening, my mother offered me food. I didn't accept it. It was 7.30 p.m. and she offered me a cup of ice cream, which I gladly took. And within 30 seconds of holding that cup, I collapsed on the floor of my house, throwing massive scissors, uncontrollable scissors. I was immediately lifted out of my house into my car, taken to my hospital, and whole night my doctors were trying to control my seizures, uncontrollable. Next day, when I got up, I was seeing myself in the ICU, recovering from that mammoth event. It was like a dream shattered. It was like a dream journey which had ended, and I could see my death to closest. My brain scans were done and it revealed a large mass in the right side of my brain, a large mass. And I knew that it is really difficult and terrible. It was unfortunate for me. At that particular time, I had 19 drugs available for me, out of which 18 were not acting. I was resistant to them. I was always handed 16 tablets in the morning, eight in the morning, eight in the evening, sensitive only to amicacin, a very toxic injection for your ears, 150 injections I had to take first on my hip. My hips got sore. Ultimately, every day, NSS used to come in and inject injections on my hand at a space of one millimeter. And I was really fighting for my life. But let me tell you, in that journey of pain, never ever I allowed myself to experience sorrow even for a single day. Never ever even experienced sorrow for a single day. On that day, I was experiencing that what had happened in my life. Why my life has changed so much? I was seeing that I was developing a life or my life had changed into a pandemic of personal mismanagement. I had everything which I wanted, but somewhere, somehow, I had lost balance in my life. The work and life balance, single life. Where is the balance? Where is the balance in our own life? We are working, we have transformed our life from human beings to human doings but we have forgotten to really enjoy it. I knew that life is supposed to be very, very simple, but it's our own thought process that makes our life very, very complex. It made it very, very complicated. And I also knew that today I'm living my life in an emergency mode. And Mohit, if you really want to enjoy your life, you have to put a break. I had to take some tough choices. 
My surgery of brain was done on 20th June 2005 after three years of illness. And I was very happy. I thought that everything would be fine. Now I'm operative. I'm perfect. And you see what happened to my brain. Only six months after my surgery, still continuing with my drugs, I developed another lesion in my brain in the cerebellum. And you know, this was not a brain. Still continuing with the drugs, my doctors from America, from Bangalore, and from Ames, India, they said that this is maximum science could do. This is the ultimate that we can achieve. It was like a hopeless situation for me. Imagine a cardiologist still fighting for his life. I knew that old ways are not going to open new doors. And I was practicing my thought power and meditation right from the birth. I went to one of the spiritual gurus in Brahma Kumaris. And she very politely and smilingly told me, just look at the interaction between a spiritualist and a scientific person and told that why don't you use the power of meditation and belief to heal yourself. I said, this is fantastic. Because if I don't change anything in my life now, nothing is going to change in my life. 4th January 2006, I took a firm step. I was continuing with their medicines. I completely changed the programming of my brain. And from 4th January, I started doing focused meditation with powerful positive affirmations every day, 3 a.m. in the morning for one hour. Telling myself that I'm perfect, I'm fine, and nothing bad is going to happen to me. My brain is free of disease. I started rejecting and repelling disease out of my body. I told myself with powerful affirmations that my brain is healing, everything is going to be just perfect and fine. I kept on doing this Raj Yoga meditation almost for a year and a half, my dear friends. And look at this, what happened. From January 2006, when my scans were like this, my fellows, my friends, everybody was telling, Mohit, you should explore new options. This is not it. You get your MRI done. I said, no, I'm not going to do anything. I was complementing my science with spirituality. And when my scans were repeated in 2007, April, this is what happened, my dear friends. The legend had completely disappeared out of my brain. The power of your thoughts. Today, I must tell you that our body is working like an orchestra. If we are creating positive, powerful and purposeful thoughts, and those thoughts are empowered with our belief system, we can completely reprogram our brain and body. We can achieve the impossible. We can create our success the way we want in our life. We can completely rewire our health system, my dear friends. So whatever you want to create outside, it must be first created in your own mind. And the most powerful ingredient is your own belief system, my dear friend. Each one of you has this power to create miracles in your life, to create magic in your life, only and only and only if you believe in your own self, my dear friends. My second story was the essence of healing. That was a beautiful story that completely changed my perspective about healing. It was a Saturday evening of 2018. I had finished operating my routine cases 9.30 p.m. in the night, about to leave my hospital. And then suddenly there was a noise outside my cancer. A young 22-year-old gentleman was brought to our cath and collapsed. Pulseless, beepiness, ECG was practically flatlined and he was being resuscitated. He had suffered a massive cardiac arrest with a myocardial infarction or what we call it as a heart attack. We were asked to operate that young boy. I said, nothing is there. What should we do? But we took him on the table, put him on the artificial ventilator support system and started operating him. Both his arteries completely clogged. We worked for almost one, one and a half, two hours on him, taking out the clots out of his arteries, stented his arteries, achieved a blood pressure of almost 50, 60 millimeters of mercury. And after achieving a reasonably good result, we shifted him to the ICU and the recovery. We little hope that he may survive. Next day, when I went for rounds, it was surprising to see that young boy sitting completely perfect. His hemodynamics absolutely recovered. People were happy. They were full of joy. 
and he had come out on that particular chase. But that was the most disturbing day of my life. I was thinking this 22 year old boy had a heart attack. He is a non diabetic, he is a non smoker, he has no history of hypertension and no family history also. Why did he suffer from a heart attack? I must talk to this person, I must take out more out of his history. I went to his family and said, I want to talk to his wife. He was married for two years, had a four month old young daughter. And his parents took me separately and said, Dr. Gupta, you talk to us. Because his wife won't come. They are on the verge of divorce. They have don't, don't have good relations. One month later, they are going to separate from each other. With my folded hands, I requested the person to call that young girl and I said that I want to really talk to them. They called that young girl and she came with a four month aged daughter, my dear friends. I made them sit both in the ICU, extubated the young boy and started asking them, what has happened in your life? What is going on wrong? Look at this, what that young boy said. He said, Sir, I earn a six digit salary. I drive a luxury car. We have a four bedroom plush apartment. But let me tell you, last two years, we have never given time to each other. We never had time to connect with each other. In this never ending race of materialism, we had forgotten to accept and love each other. These were his words. I was shaken. I said, no worries. If you want to separate, you have one month, you go ahead. But can you do two things for me? They said, yes, you will do. I said, for one month, you have a dinner together for half an hour in the evening, accept each other, talk to each other, connect with each other, love each other, enjoy with each other, but don't analyze, don't be arrogant to each other. Promise me. And they said, yes, we will do it. The second thing I said to the young lady, that your husband is going to come to me and I will follow him up in my OPD. But I will see him only in one condition. She said, what? I said, only if you bring him holding his hand to my body. And she was smiling. She said, okay, sir. If you say so, I will do it. And I discharged the patient. They started coming to my OPD. First week, they came smiling. Second week, third week, fourth week, they came happily. No negotiations, no interactions, just writing the medicines and the powerful vibration of exchange. Four months passed. 12 months passed and my dear friends, today it is more than 4 years, they still come to my OPD holding hands of each other. They come smiling, their 4 month engineering daughter has grown into a 4 year old child and they have withdrawn their diagnosis papers, my dear friends. That's the power of healing. That is the day we started conducting experiments in our life. I said I must interrogate such young people. We took 150 patients like between the age of 18 to 35 years with no risk factor and I started imagining their biologic age or what we call as a genetic age in form of telomere. Along with that, we also measured the amount of stress, the psychosocial stress that they are experiencing qualitative mesh, quantitatively. And what were the results? Look at this. These people, young boys, were aged between 18 to 35 years. But when we measured their genetic and the biologic age, you would be surprised to see that their biologic age was equal to a 60 to 95 year old person. Imagine, I was left surprised that in this costume of young boy, uh, there's a gene of almost 60 to 95 year old. And when you further analyze, you would be surprised that 98% of them had highest levels of psychosocial stress, anger, lack of love, lack of happiness and lack of gratitude in their life. I thought if it is there, how does it matter? And when we further interrogated and investigated, we saw that those people who have lack of purpose and lack of love in their life, lack of happiness in their life, they are the people whose telomerase enzyme decreases and their genetic length, the DNA length, it decreases and the disease is fast expressing in them. That's the reason that why younger people are having more and more disease. On the contrary, those people who practice love, who have purpose in their life, who are happy, who have gratitude in their life, they have great relations amongst themselves. They are the people whose telomerase enzyme is perfect and their telomere length is good and their body integrity is very well maintained, my dear friends. That's the thing. I knew that there is only and only one secret to fulfilling 
successful and healthy life, my dear friends. It's not the money, the power, the position and the amount of money that you have, my dear friends. It's only and only having good and wonderful relations. Relations that are nurtured with love, with joy and with happiness. And today, in our own labs, we are using artificial intelligence and Raj Yoga meditation to cure these patients of depression, to make them more happy and to reverse their genetic aging by practicing meditation in their life, we can create magic. We can create magic. The older paradigm was we have a fixed DNA makeup, but today science has clearly shown that our choices that we make, they decide the amount of genes that we are regulating. The switching on and switching off the genes is completely dependent on our own powerful and positive thoughts. And that is the way that completely changed my perspective towards healing. And I started practicing holistic medicine and cardiology in my practice. We have the power to regulate our genes. Let us take a moment to clean our mind with negative emotions of anger, of irritation, of hatred and jealousy, of competition and criticism, of complaint and expectations, and let us embrace love and joy in our life. My dear friends, this is what is the essence of life and this is what we need in our life. My third story is the power of resilience. My dear friends, it was 2014. My passion was playing badminton and sports. And 21st March 2013, I suffered a severe spinal injury when I was playing badminton. I had pars interventable arrest fracture, developed spondylolisthesis with severe radiating shooting pains in my leg. My physicians, my doctors and my surgeons advised me best which I took. Nothing was working out. They said things will be fine. I kept on doing it for six and seven months. They advised me against surgery because they told me that it would be really complicated and this would leave you with, leave you with some really troublesome pain. But what I was seeing was, I was visualizing that I was playing badminton again. While lying down in my bed, while they saw that I will be left crippled, I just saw myself playing badminton, playing sports every day. I visualized that thing in my life. And my dear friends, ultimately on 2014, 20th January, I subjected myself to surgery. I knew that the person who has a why to live in his life can appear with almost any how. That was my principle. That is how I used to live my life. I was seeing myself back in the sports, back on the arena, playing the same good sports with my passion. And my passion was deciding my purpose of life. On 20th January 2014, my major spinal surgery was done. This was the picture of the second day. And this is how my spine was fixed, my dear friends. I started my workout, my exercise every day. I was rejuvenated. I was determined that I have to be back. Nothing is going to hold me back. And today, after seven years of that, I'm back to my sports again. I can easily run for almost eight to 10 kilometers. I have more than 20,000 steps every day. I feel rejuvenated. I work for more than 18 hours a day. My schedule starting at 3.30 a.m., running up to 11 p.m. at the night but I have never accepted that I have ever been ill. You must understand, my dear friends, life is going to throw you problems and you have to option to spiral amongst all those problems. But you also have an option not to spiral. Instead, you come out evolving out of those problems as a more mature, as a more powerful, as a more beautiful human beings, my dear friends. Raj Yoga Meditation is one of the most powerful epigenetic tools that you can use. Just as you charge your mobile and electronic appliances. Similarly, my dear friends, meditation is a powerful tool that can completely reprogram your brain. 20 minutes of meditation is what is required to revamp your brain. A normal brain is a weakened brain, a brain which is prone to anxiety and depression. Look at this, the disharmony between the left and the right brain. And only 20 minutes of meditation can completely resynchronize your brain, give you a more optimized, better performing and an emotionally stable system, my dear friends. This is how our science and the power of silence is working. Let us not just work with our left brain, which is intellectual and analytical, 
But when we are having a holistic approach, we create a beautiful balance, a holistic brain, we activate our right brain, which is passionate, powerful, and loving, my dear friends. This is the power of life. Kisine bahut sober kaha hai, dosto, ki har jazbat ko zindagi mein zuba nahi milti. Har arzu ko zindagi mein dua nahi milti. Muskurad banaye rakho to dunia saath hai, aansu ko to aankhon mein bhi pana nahi milti. We should live our life with smile. We should live our life with purpose. And we should live our life with happiness. I leave you with this beautiful slide. With this beautiful message that today is going to be the first day of the rest of your life. From today. It's your choice how you lead your life. How you design your destiny. Your choices are going to create your conscious future. Thank you so much for watching.